Amen. All right, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Let's hold our place there, but let's turn over to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. One is written here by James, and Ephesians is written by the Apostle Paul. If I can find it this morning, I, can, I have it memorized, but I want to read it. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, probably a familiar verse. Many of you probably heard this verse, these verses before. It says in verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, not, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Here, the Apostle Paul says we're saved by faith, not by works. But what did he go on to say in verse 10? We're created uh, in Christ Jesus unto good works. Okay? Now let's keep that in mind. First point today is faith is not just talk. In James chapter 14, we see he says here, um, What does it profit, my brethren, no a man say he hath faith? Okay, that's a key phrase there. By the way, um, th I believe James is talking about, if we start out in the first chapter, the Bible says that uh, we are, um, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works. It worketh patience, it works different things. Do you know that God has to test our faith, to increase our faith? Somebody once said faith is like a muscle. As it's exercised, it grows. And so God will test, put us to the test. By the way, did he do that to Abraham? Do you know, if, if we go back, we won't take the time to read it, but it says uh, that he, uh, he did test Abraham. Now, by the way, do you think God knew what Abraham would do? Of course he did. Abraham obeyed God. He took his one and only son, Isaac, and offered him on the altar of sacrifice. The word test there means to prove. Did Abraham have to prove anything to God? No. God already knew. So why is it in the Bible? Well, let's remember what uh, it says um, in the New Testament. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay? So let's remember that. Uh, the scriptures are for our learning. James wanted his readers to know that, Jesus Christ, that faith in Jesus Christ is not a dead faith, but a living and working faith. The living faith expresses itself every, in everyday life and daily trials and difficulties. That's what verse chapter 1 is about. In doing what God says, in caring for those in need, in loving our neighbors and not treating people special because they are rich. That's found in chapter 2, in controlling our tongue, chapter 3, and not loving the world, and, and in resisting the devil, that's in chapter 4, including God in our plans, also in chapter 4, and in chapter 5, in our daily prayer life. And so that's what James is writing about there. By the way, God's word really works, doesn't it? But I must put it to work. You know, uh, in my shed and in my garage, there's a lot of tools, <laughs> A lot of stuff in there. Uh, I've got some good tools. A shovel is a good tool, isn't it? A wrench is a good tool. But does it work? It works only when we put it to work, right? We must use it. And we must use God's word. We must trust God's word. Now, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, Paul says this, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And some would teach that, see, if, there's, um, if you're not working, uh, you've got to work to be saved. That's not what that's teaching. Okay? He's saying work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, verse 13, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The idea is to employ yourself in things which accompany salvation to please the Lord. Okay, so we're not working for our salvation. You cannot work for your salvation. It's impossible. I'll give you some more verses. Uh, let me, just the idea of the Apostle Paul saying that he wants to please the Lord with the things that he does in his life. 
Uh, the Bible calls it our conversation, meaning our lifestyle. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, he says this, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. In other words, Paul's saying, I didn't arrive yet. I'm not like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, Paul says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What's he saying? He said, I want to be more like Jesus Christ. I want to do what pleases the Lord. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, another very familiar verse, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Aren't you glad about that? God is going to reward us for the things that we do. And uh, I think the greatest reward will be the idea of just being with the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity in heaven. That's going to be a wonderful thing, and the Bible calls it rest. James had been misunderstood by many. Um, in chapter 2, verse 24 there, where James says, See, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? That seems to contradict what Paul's saying, right? Paul said we were not saved by works. We're saved by grace. Some people think that this contradicts uh, Romans 3.28, that a man is justified apart from the works of the law. Romans 3.28 says this, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And so, is James and Paul contradicting each other? Well, if you've been in church and been saved for any period of time and you've heard some good preaching, you know that wherever there seems to be a contradiction, it's not a contradiction. The Bible never contradicts itself. You have to compare Scripture with Scripture. So obviously, if one man is teaching we're saved by grace without works, and another man seemingly says that we're saved by faith and works, there must be a misunderstanding, correct? A misunderstanding with us, not with these men, because these men agreed. Uh, the Apostle Paul and James knew each other and were very much one in Christ. Paul agreed with James that faith and works go together. In Titus 3.8, Titus is something that the Apostle Paul is writing to Titus, and he says, this is a faithful saying, for Titus 3.8, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, he's saying to Titus that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So Paul's saying, okay, they believe that they need to be careful to maintain good works. Paul agreed with James that a person may say that he has faith, but not really have faith. Titus 1.16 says, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So Paul's saying faith and works are important. But he's not saying that faith plus works equals salvation. Faith alone saves your soul. James agrees with Paul and that Abraham was justified by faith. In James 2.23, you can look at it there if you're still there. James 2.23, and the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. That's what James says. Is there works there? No, it says that James, uh, that uh, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So what was, why did God put in the Bible about this, well, many reasons, but Abraham uh, being tested by God with the offering of uh, Isaac, What did it do? It shows you and me that Abraham had true faith. Okay, so that's what James is really trying to get to. Uh, Let's turn to uh, Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Um, By the way, you ought to come to the early service. I was under a time restraint then, so I skipped some things. And it's a lot shorter service. (laughs) I'm only kidding, but I have no time restraint now, or I still do. 
All right, James, I'm sorry, Romans 4, 1 through 7. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Exactly what James said. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, that, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. So folks, we're not, faith is not just talk. Faith uh, will produce in us something. And I don't want to jump ahead of myself, which I often do in my notes, but I want to just go to the second point. Faith is seen by works. What Paul taught and what James taught are both true. The question Paul answered in Romans is this, how can I be declared righteous before God? You might be asking that today. How can I be declared righteous before God? Well, the answer is simple by faith and not by works. The question James answered in the book of James is this, how can I show people my faith? Look at James 2.18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have work. Show me thy faith without thy works. Can you do it? Can you show somebody faith without any works? By the way, can I see whether you're saved or not? Can I see the Holy Spirit in your life? We can't. You know, if a person is faithful to God and he's, he or she is uh, living for God and doing things for God, don't we kind of assume that, wow, they're, they're a Christian, they're saved. But on the other hand, you might have somebody who says they're saved and they don't attend church. Uh, what comes out of their mouth isn't always right. Um, they just, there's just nothing there to prove to you and I that they are truly saved. And we question as man, because man looketh on the outward, but God sees the heart, amen? God looketh on the heart. He knows, but we don't know. But I can look at people here, and, and I, I wouldn't pick anybody out. I'd say a majority of all of us, I can say, that person is a true believer, because of the things they do. Look at the, uh, the activity we had at the Denver Fair this past week. And, uh, you know, it's just one item. It's just one thing. There are other things. By the way, do you know that it says in Malachi about giving to God? He says, prove me here therewith if I will not pour thee out a blessing. Do you know it takes faith to give? You know, because if you, if you give some of your money away, don't you have less money? <laughs> Pretty simple math, right? I say God gives you $100, and God says, well, I want, you to give, I want you to give some to church. I want you to give some to help somebody. I say, well, if I do that, I'm going to have less money. I'm already tight. And so it takes a, an element of faith to do that. And God says, go ahead and prove me. Go ahead and put me to the test and see if I won't pour out a blessing for you. See, that takes faith. That's what we're talking about here, faith. Um, so, Faith is seen by our works. Um, how can I show others that I am a believer and that I am right before God? I show this by my good works. Faith is the root of salvation. Works is the fruit of salvation. You see, you, uh, I don't know trees that well. Somebody uh, might know a tree real well, and they can look at a tree before it is bearing any fruit and tell you what kind of tree that is. I can't. I don't know if it's an apple tree or a cherry tree or a pear tree or an oak tree. I have no idea. But when it bears its fruit, that's pretty easy to see then, right? I mean, if a, if a tree has apples on, the, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if that's a pear tree or a cherry tree. <laughs> no, I know it's an apple tree. You get the point. You know, it's the same way with our lives. Faith is the root of salvation, our good works is the fruit of salvation. And God wants us to bear fruit. The book of Romans concentrates on the root. The book of James is concentrating on the fruit. 
It's not enough to say that I have faith. I must show that I have faith. In other words, if you're really, uh, I'm sorry, I, had to, I already covered it out of my notes. If you're really an apple tree, let me see some apples. Uh, so people cannot see our faith. They cannot look into our heart. So James is not talking about how a person is saved. He's talking about how a person can show or prove that he's really saved. I had a, he was a pastor, but he was also my, one of my Bible college uh, teachers. And uh, I don't know how many times I've heard him say this, but it has really stuck with me. He said that uh, the tongue is a dipstick to the heart. And what he meant was what's in the heart comes out of the mouth, right? And uh, as I said in the early service, some of you, most of you probably know what a dipstick is, but some of you probably don't, right? I think most of the men, I hope, know what a dipstick is. I try to teach my sons, check that oil regularly. That's the lifeblood of the motor. You've got to have water in there, and you've got to have oil in there. But oil is important. And so there's two dipsticks, actually, on a car. Uh, if they still have them, I'm pretty sure they do. You can tell I don't check the transmission fluid often, but I do check the oil. But anyway, there's a transmission dipstick and there's an oil dipstick. And if I pull that dipstick out from the oil, I want to see it at the right spot on that dipstick. It's not too low, not too much in there either. And I want to see it's uh, somewhat of a light brown color so I can test it. Now, if I pull the transmission dipstick out, I don't want to see brown. I want to see a reddish color fluid that's in there. Right, Brother Davis? Still red. So anyway... Uh, that's what a dipstick is, and our tongue is a dipstick to our heart. What comes out of the mouth, uh, it says here in Matthew 15, 18, but those things which proceed out of the mouth cannot come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Okay, so when we get saved and we have faith, there ought to be a difference in our speech, amen? I still remember when I was younger, I, I didn't have a very good mouth. But after I got saved and I got right with the Lord, all that went away. And so this is what James is talking about. Uh, the third point, faith is more than just mental assent. If you ask people if they believe in God, many people, most people would probably say, yeah, I believe in God. And then most people say they believe in God. There's a few people that say, no, I'm an atheist or I'm an agnostic. And the Gnostic says, I just don't know. Well, most people say they believe in God, but does that mean everybody's going to heaven? No, they might believe in God, but they don't know. Maybe they've never been taught that um, Jesus Christ died for them, and it's through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that they get to heaven. Because, you know, all religions have this idea that they've got to do something to earn salvation. Christianity is not like that. I don't do anything to get saved. Christ did it all for us, Amen. We just put our faith and trust in him. Works comes after that. Somebody, you've probably seen this already, you don't get the cart before the horse. The horse is the faith, the cart is the works, and that's how it should be. And so there are some people that say they have faith or believe in God as uh, Verses 19 and 20 say here, Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So Matthew 7, 21 to 23 says this, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is he talking about there? What's the will of the Father? The will of the Father is to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Uh, there's more to that as far as the will of the Father, but I believe I'm primarily saying that. And many will say to me in that day, what day? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, so there are people who will say they have faith, but they don't really have true biblical faith. Now, the fourth part here is we have faith demonstrated by some Bible characters. James gives some 
Bible characters here. Look at verses 21. Uh, let's just start there, James 2, 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now, James is showing these two Bible characters, uh, Rahab, and uh, he's uh, showing Abraham, and he's saying to them, see how by their works their faith was made perfect. First, they believe God and then they showed their actions. The first example, Abraham, notice he says, it says that, it says he was justified by works. Normally, when we think of justification, it means to be declared righteous. And that's what it does mean. But in this instance, it has the idea that um, vindicated or show to be righteous. James is saying that works, the works of Abraham when he offered Isaac on the altar of God's, at God's command vindicated him or showed that his faith was real. Okay? Verse 25, how did the children of Israel know Rahab had faith in the God of Israel and wasn't trying to deceive them? Well, her works of hiding the spies and helping them escape were the works that proved to these men that her faith was genuine. The word justified, again, can mean to show, to exhibit, to convince one to be righteous, such as he or she wishes himself or herself to be considered. That's what James is talking about. Okay? I use the illustration of Noah and the early morning service. Remember Noah? Um, what did he do? He built an ark, right? A very large ship. Who told him to do that? God did, right? You find that in the book of uh, Genesis. And I was going to have you turn there, but I'm not going to take the time to do it. But again, um, did it ever rain before then? Did Noah build it right next to the ocean? <laughs> How long did it take him to build it? 120 years? Did people mock him for building such a big boat? They did. You ever think, did Noah's faith ever waver? Might have. Scriptures don't say, but let me ask you this. Did Noah have faith in God, what God told him to do? You see then how his work showed to you and I that Noah had faith in God. Noah built that ark, and it took him 120 years to do it. And as sure as God said it would, it rained and it flooded the whole earth. And God shut Noah and his family in that ark. And you and I can say, now there's a man who had faith. You see, God wants each and every one of us to exhibit good works in our lives, to show people that we have faith. Um, in Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, we have the light of the world living in us. We sang that, Jesus. But how do people see that light? Do we glow? <laughs> we don't glow, do we? Well, some would say we do. I've, I've heard stories to that, but the f fact is, generally, people don't see that, but they can see our works, and they, or when they see our good works, they glorify our Father, which is in heaven, so it's important. Now, here's the thing. James concludes with a challenge here. Faith without works is dead, just like the body uh, without the spirit is dead. A man who has no spirit is a dead man. A faith that has no works is a dead faith. Dead faith meaning destitute of force or power, inactive, inoperative. I used this in early morning service, and uh, I had this message planned, and then uh, Wednesday night, Sarah comes to our Wednesday night children's class, and she has two flashlights for an object lesson. And I thought, wow, what a great illustration 
of this verse here um, about a dead fig. Both flashlights were black. Both of them were just slightly different. I think they had different switches on them. And she asked the children, what's the difference between the flashlights? And they named different couple little things that they could notice. And she said, now you're missing something. And what is it? And they didn't know. So she turns the one flashlight on and it lights up. She pushes the button on the other flashlight and nothing. What was the difference? The one didn't have any batteries in it. It had no power. Do you realize, folks, when we get saved, we have the Holy Spirit living within us? And that's where we get the power? It's not us, it's Christ. It's like Pastor Seth said, you know, he, he, he started off the week not feeling well. And uh, he was concerned about that with the Denver Fair and all. But God gave him the strength to help get through it. And you know, God gives us all the strength to do these things. You see, God is going to put us to the test because he wants to grow our faith. And so let's not, not trust him. Let's just trust him. And let's do things for God because God's going to use them. You know, we just gave that stuff out at the Denver Fair, and we said, okay, eight people uh, was presented the gospel. Said, oh, that's not that many, and nobody got saved. Do you think God's working? Yeah. Amen. He's working. A lot of tracts were given out, testimony and so forth. They saw us. <laughs> And uh, listen, God is working, and we need to just trust him. And we need to keep doing stuff like that, because God's going to use it. Now, I'm going to give you another verse here. Uh, turn with me to 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. Give you another little bit of an illustration about this inoperative power. It says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we starting to see more and more of that? We are, aren't we? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Look what it says here, having a form of godliness. To me, that seems to think that, okay, they've got a form of godliness. They, maybe they act like or say that they're a Christian. They say they have faith. But look what the rest of the verse says. But denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Could it be that what Paul is saying here is there's no Holy Spirit in them. They're not truly saved. There's no power. I have the idea that's what Paul is trying to talk about there. You see, we're saved by faith and faith alone. Amen to that. The Bible is not contradicting itself. James is just saying, okay, you have faith. Show me that faith. Show it to God that others and the world that others may see and glorify our Heavenly Father. Okay? So I hope you get that. So isn't it important for us to let our light shine? Remember, it's not our light. It's His light. Let the light of Jesus Christ shine through you. How are they going to see that? They're only going to see that through what we do, what we say, how we act. And you know, sadly, we'll fail at times. I know I do. And uh, more times than I would like to, sometimes I may uh, get um, aggravated with somebody or not be as kind as I should be as a Christian. And I have to ask for forgiveness. God doesn't expect us to be perfect, but he wants us to be growing. He wants us to be shining that light of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit that lives within us. So I trust the Lord will help us to do that. If you're not truly saved, Please talk to one of us. We'd love to share the gospel with you. The gospel simply means the good news. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. He was crucified. He shed his blood. He did all that for you. He paid the way of salvation. It's the gift of God. All you have to do is receive it. And once you receive it and you have faith, you have the Holy Spirit in your life, I believe as you walk with the Lord, 
and want to please him, it will show forth in your life. And people will see there is something different about him. There's something different about her. I want what they have. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your help today. And I thank you, Father, for the word of God. I pray, Father, that you would continue to speak to hearts. Lord, we wouldn't want anyone to be like that one that said, Lord, Lord, and not really be saved. Father, I'm so thankful that I am saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, faith alone. And Father, I want to show what you've done for me and what's living in me, the Holy Spirit. I want to show that to the world so they can see it and they can glorify the Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity. We ask now for your blessing for the rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Pastor Seth, thank you.